What is going on guys, Monty Webby here, back again on Tuesday, a very good night with the plays yesterday, we had two pitchers that did very well, Velasquez and Lance Lynn, uh, Velasquez actually had a no hitter through five innings, so we could have got even more out of him, but he had a tough six innings, so you let it go a little bit there, but still solid, got around 17 drafting points, and also Lance Lynn returned a lot of value, at only 5,500, he got us 18 drafting points, so both of those players we're very good at pitching, and also we had some hitters that did some work. Eddie Rosario got 18, Sano got 15, I believe. Uh, also, we had Trevor Story at the home run they were looking for against the lefty. Racking up 25 drafting points. Arianato had a disappointing night, but he still got 8 drafting points because he got walked twice. So, all in all, it was a very good night with the plays yesterday. So, let's try to keep it going here tonight. Drop a like, though, before we get going. I would greatly appreciate that. If you ran out any of those guys and got some success with them yesterday, be sure to leave a like. Let's try to get over 80 likes on this one and definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to get these plays every single day. So let's just hop into it. I'm going to go with Kenta Maeda as my first pitcher at 10,800 here going against Philly. The guy's been pitching very well in the last two outings against Colorado. 39 drafting points with 12 Ks. And against um, uh, Miami, he got 36 drafting points with 8 Ks there in 8 innings. So very good stuff the last two uh, games out. And he's been getting a lot of strikeouts this year. That's why I like him in the spot against Philly because they are strikeout prone. And he has a 30% K rate and a 14% swing strike rate on the season so he's fooling a lot of hitters so I think against Philly here he can get a good amount of K's and Philly is facing a park downgrade uh, from their pretty hitter friendly park in Philly going to LA which is definitely uh, pitcher friendly here so I think Maeda can have another solid outing here get us around like 25 drafting points hopefully and he should be able to get some run support uh, to get the win here. Jay Garrietta has been pitching pretty well this year, but he's been pitching over his head. I think that, uh, some of his stuff has been kind of lucky. He's been leaving a lot of guys on bases. Uh, I mean, leaving a lot of guy on, guys on base, so I think he'll get hit a little harder in this game. Maeda should be able to get the run support. I think he can get the win here in the spot against Philly. He has some good BVP against these guys already. Small BVP, but still good. So we're going to go ahead and take Maeda there. As my first pitcher, and for my second guy, we're going to go with Tyson Ross at 9,200. I think he could go, honestly, under own just because of the name and uh, all those other big names kind of on the slate at pitcher. So, but in this matchup against Miami, I love the splits that he has against this lineup. Miami is very righty uh, heavy. There's only going to be three lefties in this lineup, but two of them being uh, Derek Dietrich and JT Riddle, who aren't good hitters. So the only guy you really have to worry about in this lineup is going to be Justin Bohr, I think, for Tyson Ross from the lefty side of things. And Tyson Ross against right-handed batters this year has been money in the bank. He's allowed just a 141 batting average to them and 28% uh, K rate. So against righties, he has very good stuff. And this is a righty-heavy uh, lineup. And it's going to be in San Diego as well, a pitcher-friendly park. Ross has had some good strikeout stuff this year. Against a good Washington lineup, he got uh, 9 Ks there and 31 drafting points. And Washington doesn't even strike out that much. So some very good stuff in the last couple of outings. He didn't start his last game. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe it was uh, a weather thing. But I know he got like an extra day of rest there. So I think Tyson Ross is going to be in for a good game here. Uh, maybe around like 20 to 25 drafting points. He's had some great stuff, great strikeout stuff, and Miami can definitely strike out a good amount as well. So Tyson Ross, I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. So those are your two pitchers. You got Kenta Maeda and Tyson Ross. Both I feel like are very safe options, like pitcher-friendly environments and some good matchups for strikeouts. And Tyson Ross, especially with those good splits against righty. So that's what I'm thinking for pitcher. And now for my first batter, I'm going to go with Brian Dozier. I've attacked this guy a lot against lefties because his uh, salaries is so cheap, and he still has that power. He's been hitting a little bit better recently. Uh, he won three for five last night, good for 15 drafting points. So it looks like he's breaking out of that slump a little bit, at least for his batting average sake. He's hitting the ball a little bit better recently. But against uh, Danny Duffy, Danny Duffy has been getting killed against right-handed batters this year. Like, and uh, Brian Dozier, throughout his career, he normally has good power 
and just good uh, hitting against lefty pitchers. So in this matchup, I think Dozier can get the better of him here, get an extra base hit or maybe even a home run against Duffy. If you look at Duffy's splits, he's allowed 2.5 home runs per nine to right-handed batters, so I think Dozier can definitely have a good opportunity of hitting a home run here. The temperatures are pretty high here. It's set around 80 degrees here in Kansas City, so that can help the ball carry a little bit as well. So Brian Dozier against Danny Duffy. Minnesota's projected 4.7 runs, so Vegas likes him a good amount. Dozier leading off the lineup. I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. Uh, so that's for my first hitter. And for my second guy, I'm going to stick with the Twins lineup. Go with the guy who won last night, Miguel Sano. We have we a uh, uh, great power upside with him, like I mentioned last night. A uh, great ability to hit a home run off anyone, really. But against the lefties last year, typically he was very good. He had a 307 ISO and a 408 Woba against them in the whole entire season. And uh, I mentioned the struggles with Danny Duffy against Wright. So I think that little combo of uh, Dozier and Sano, the nice power upside were two righties against Danny Duffy. I like that a lot. And their salary isn't too bad at 3900 for Sano. And uh, I think Dozier was 3900 as well. So two guys that have good upside at a solid price tag. Like I mentioned, the weather is pretty solid. Vegas projecting 4.7 runs. So I think everything adds up for a good little uh, opportunity here for both these guys. So I'm going to go ahead and lock them in there. Uh, the nice little twin combo there at 3,900 both. And for my third guy, I'm going to go with David Dahl here. Uh, I mentioned him the other night in Colorado. And the fact stands here, he's a very good hitter against uh, right-handed pitchers. Or not very good, but a lot better against right-handed pitchers. And um, he has good power, especially here in Colorado in Coors Field. So if you look at the splits, like I mentioned, Last time, he's much better at home so far. 8.8 .8 drafting points, so only compared to three on the road. The batting average and OPS and everything is night and day different. So against uh, Jeff Samarja here in Coors Field, I love the spot for him. Samarja has been getting killed against left-handed batters, and he hasn't uh, played in Coors Field yet, so it could get even worse here. Samarja's allowed 2.5 Home runs per nine to left-handed batters, and this is a huge part downgrade for him going from his normal home stadium of San Fran, which is very pitcher-friendly, now going to Coors Field, which is extremely, extremely hitter-friendly. So David Dahl, towards the top of this lineup, I think he can have a very good outing. He got a day of rest last night, came in, got a pinch hit, and got a stolen base. So he's doing pretty well recently for this Rockies team. I think he'll keep it going here. Against the Marge, a good matchup, so go ahead and lock him in there. So that's the core five. Got Maeda, Tyson Ross, Sano, Brian Dozier, and David Dahl. And for my cheap guy, not too cheap, but I wanted to mention this guy as well. Matt Carpenter at 3,800, going against Zach Davies here. The thing here with this matchup is that uh, he has extremely good splits against Zach Davies. Like, the power on these splits are insane. 9 for 21. The sample isn't too big, but what he's done in the sample, he has four doubles and two home runs. So in 21 plate appearances, a little bit less than half of them. He's got an extra base hit. So he definitely has Zach Davies' number. And uh, he's facing a park upgrade here going from St. Louis to Milwaukee. Milwaukee, <clears throat> a good hitting park, uh, good for power. And he's had a good power surge over the last couple weeks or a uh, week or two here. Uh, if you look at his last game in Milwaukee, he had a home run, 17 drafting points in Pittsburgh, two doubles, and then a home run in Pittsburgh as well. So the last three games, he has what, a uh, four extra base hits, and then he had a little surge here before uh, against Kansas City and Philly. He got some extra base hits there, so his power has been extremely good in the last two months, so I think he can keep it going against Zach Davies, a guy that he has had good history against and a good ballpark here in Milwaukee, so I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. A uh, guy with good power, especially against right-handed pitchers, so that is it with the plays. He's still got 35-75 remaining per player with uh, good power throughout this lineup and good safe pitching that can get you some strikeout upside on the slate. So that's a recipe for success, so let's hope it works out. So drop a like in the video before you head out. 80 plus likes if you can hit that. Thank you so much. And hit that subscribe button like I mentioned before. If you haven't already to get these winning plays every single day, you can hit that bell icon as well to get alerted every time I upload these videos. So that is it though. Good luck tonight, guys. 14 games slate. The weather looks pretty good right now besides that mets Atlanta game. I think that was the only game that really, that really concerned me. Uh, so keep your eye out on that if you're trying to attack anyone in that game. 
But uh, that is it. So good luck, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow.